Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Thursday, July 29th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, the Canelo Callip plant negotiations have fallen apart. My first impression is that the fight is still going to happen. It's the right fight for both. It would be for the undisputed title at 168 pounds. Only one man can give that to Caleb Plant. Only one man can give that to Canelo. And it's the other man. Right? If I'm both fighters, if I'm the people involved in the negotiation, right, without getting into specifics, there simply is no way that I let this opportunity pass. Because what we've learned in boxing is that you think you're on the verge of a unification match between Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua. And then not only do those plans get derailed, but then the fight never happens for years, right? Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mayweather, folks, that fight should have happened five years earlier. So here we have Canelo, Caleb Plant. We don't know what's gonna happen in the future. What I hope happens here is I'm hoping somebody makes a concession understanding that you get paid for the last fight you had. In other words, whoever wins this fight is going to make up whatever concession that they give up to make the fight happen. Let me also say too that Mexican Independence Day is a huge boxing day in Las Vegas. You only have that weekend one time a year. It just boggles my mind, and I mean this, that these two guys can't come to an agreement. I'm hoping boxing fans, I'm hoping interviewers, I'm hoping the press follow these guys around and say, Hey, Caleb, what's up? How come you're not fighting Canelo? Understand, I know Canelo's getting paid more in the match. But if Caleb Plant beats him, Caleb Plant is going to elevate his status immensely. Let me just back up a little bit here. People need to realize that the cash cow going into the De La Hoya Mayweather fight was Oscar De La Hoya. Right? It was only after Mayweather beat De La Hoya that Mayweather became money. That Mayweather then got exalted, got his status elevated, and made countless millions of dollars. So sports fans, people on YouTube, need to start saying, Hey, look, this is the fight we want. Dare I say, if they don't give us this fight, they better give us a damn good fight. Right? If Canelo's not going to fight Khaled Plant, I'm hoping I see Canelo in the ring against Jamal Charlo or Golovkin or Demetrius Andre or, let's talk about him, David Benavides. Now, you have the stars aligning here, but for political reasons... Benavides might be off the table. Understand, Showtime has just announced that Benavides is going to fight Jose Uscate, the guy who Caleb Plant beat for the title in about later this month. Now understand, contracts are made to be bought out. Right? If there's another fight that's just too big to pass up, you can give the guy step-aside money. You can say to the network, hey, I got to fight Canelo, but I'll get back to you. I'll pay you back down the road with some other event. Now, what I want folks to do is to Google Abel Sanchez's view on who can beat
Canelo. Abel Sanchez, of course, is an esteemed trainer. He was the trainer of Golovkin. He has prepared a fighter to fight Canelo. Right? Understand, too, Abel Sanchez goes back to terrible Terry Norris. This is a boxing lifer who's been involved in the sport for different generations of fighters. Right? Terry Norris, of course, is in the Hall of Fame. Abel Sanchez believes that David Benavides can beat Canelo. Well, folks, does it get better than this? Canelo wants to fight in the middle of September in Las Vegas. By chance, David Benavides is training for a fight that's going to take place later this month. If people act quickly, maybe we get Canelo Benavides. By the way, Benavides, unbeaten. He would be the only unbeaten fighter in that fight. Understand, too, Benavides, former champion at 168. Been there, done that. Also, think about the styles. I guarantee you, Benavides is not going to be running away from Canelo. You're talking about two guys who want to operate in the pocket. This would not be the Canelo-Callum Smith fight, where Callum Smith backs away from the pocket. No, 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 no. David Benavides, I'm sure, does not believe he's met the man who can hang with him in the pocket. Folks, this would be high action. But, of course, it's boxing. So there's a complication. <laughs> Caleb Plant fights for PBC. Right? There's more money in the Canelo Caleb Plant fight because that's a fight for the undisputed title. David Benavides is associated with PBC. So you would have the awkward situation. Let's say Canelo pivots and says, hey man, I don't like the negotiation with Caleb Plant. Right? Let's say he pivots and he says, hey man, I'm tired of Benavides calling me out, which Benavides has been doing. I'm tired of guys like Abel Sanchez claiming I can't beat this guy. Let me go fight him. The problem is simply that PBC would have an awkward situation where they'd be saying, okay, let's negotiate on behalf of Benavides when we couldn't close the deal on behalf of Caleb Plant, right? Sometimes politics dictates the situation. This might be the kind of political situation where Canelo, who's pretty much a free agent, says, okay, that's it, I'll fight Benavides, right? Because let's face it, that's who Canelo is, right? Canelo's like, okay, Danny Jacobs, come on down. Miguel Cotto, come on down. Right? I mean, you know, uh, Rocky Fielding, come on down. Callum Smith, you're unbeaten, come on down. Kovalev, come on down. Right? Canelo strikes me as the kind of guy who believes he's the best. He has a long history of fighting tough fighters. When he fights Golovkin the first fight, and people like me come online and say, hey, I thought Golovkin won that fight. What does Canelo do? He runs it back. So let's pay real close attention to Canelo's next move. Right? In my opinion, his next move should be to call back up Caleb Plant and say, all right, player, let's get this fight done. If not for us, for the fans. Right? If I need to make some concession that short term it's going to cost me seven figures. Well, hell, I'll get that back if I win this fight and I become undisputed at 168. Let's talk about the fans a bit more because somehow we've been missing from the conversation. Now, look, I'm in the United States. While I've had some family live in the United Kingdom, I've never been to the United Kingdom. 
right? I think I might have stopped through the airport once, but I'm not sure, right? So I've, I've never been in London. I've never walked around the United Kingdom. Heard it's a great country, right? Well, let me just say this. It's clear, even from this American perspective, that the heavyweight division, ground zero right now, is the United Kingdom. Right, that's clear. We could argue about heavyweights all day long. Now keep in mind, that could change because things do change. If Usyk takes out AJ, this United Kingdom hegemony will have dissipated. But right now, Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua, if those two were to fight, it's only in the ridiculous world of boxing that there could even be discussion on them fighting someplace other than the United Kingdom. Let me also say this too. When you're young, it's about the money, right? You're not thinking straight. I got, uh, I, I loved a job that I had as a summer associate, then I got got offered a package um, when I was graduating and I foolishly took that package. I was dumb. You talk to older people and you find out that money is just one of the things to consider. That there are other things to consider, right? Things that seem dumb to a young person like happiness, right? Where you wanna live the rest of your life. What do you actually want to do with your life? Now, Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua, in my opinion, both have a debt to the British people. Folks, it's that community that supported you on the way up. You know, few countries put together a boxing telecast and have the boxing culture of the United Kingdom, right? You're watching some UK boxing show and they'll have someone like Carl Froch on the show. They'll have someone like David Hay on the show, right? Boxers who aren't even in the main event are their ringside. People like Joe Joyce suddenly show up and start talking about sparring sessions, right? That's the UK. Now, how could you have two guys with a share of the belt at heavyweight and people seriously considering, and I know the money's thick, I understand the offer is huge, but people are actually considering exporting that fight to some other place? You got to be kidding me. Well, put it this way, if Anthony Joshua gets by Usyk, and I'm a skeptic, Right? I'm not even going to mention Tyson Fury getting by Wilder because I think that's a done deal. Right, There's a significant possibility. In fact, it's a likelihood that Tyson Fury fights Anthony Joshua in Saudi Arabia or some other country, some country other than the United Kingdom. So here's where I actually think the fighters need to step up. Right, Eddie Hearn and Bob Arum, of course, are having some debate on where the fight should be. Folks, that's what promoters do. Right, they're looking out for their fighter. They want the big money. Boxing's the kind of sport where your fighter could lose his next fight. So you need to make sure he's compensated for that next fight. I get it. But if I'm Tyson Fury and if I'm Anthony Joshua, I might have to pull Eddie or Bob aside. And I might have to say, you know what, let's leave some money on the table. Right? If I have to give up a few million dollars, you know, something tells me my family will still be able to eat. If I were one of these guys, right? I get the feeling, you know, Tyson Fury or AJ can leave a few million dollars on the table, or more accurately, a few million pounds. Right? And they could say, okay, look, let's make this fight in fill in the blank, London, wherever, right? Some historical venue in the UK where this fight's gonna be all over the paper. 
When the fight happens, people are going to be in the arena. They're going to be outside the arena. Whoever wins the fight can then walk down the street the next day and a crowd will emerge. It'll be an instant parade. That's what these fighters should be talking about. That's what they should be thinking about. You want to know that in the third round when you land some shots and the crowd is cheering for you. You want to make sure that the crowd knows who you are. Not VIPs from some foreign country, but, you know, fans who were there when you weren't who you are now. Right? You want the Tyson Fury army. You want the Anthony Joshua army out in full effect for the fight. So look, it's easy for a guy on YouTube to say, right? I'm not dealing with making million dollar or million pound concessions if not more, right? I'll agree, I'm just thinking in terms of what would take the roof off of the event? What would make this event so hype that 20 years from now, right, people look back on the event and say, oh yeah, I remember that fight and stuff like that. The way they look back on Joshua Klitschko, right, I'm shocked that with the boxing culture the UK has, with the venues the UK has, with the history of fans coming out for big fights that the UK has, that these fighters are even thinking about fighting in a different country. That's crazy. Anyway, that's my take, right? Obviously, I'm a fan. I'm not you know, I don't understand. Honestly, I, I just don't understand. When guys are negotiating for the undisputed championship at 168, both guys are to get a lot of money. And then they say, hey, man, I, I just can't sign this contract. I just don't get it. I also don't get when two guys are from the United Kingdom. <laughs> they both have shares of the belt. Fans want them to get in the ring together. And they're talking about leaving the country. Right? Maybe I'm too much of a fan. If you're part of boxing business and you want to tell us the other view, and I'm aware of the fact that some of the biggest fights in history took place on the road. Right? Foreman beats Fraser in Kingston, Jamaica. Right? Ali beats Foreman in Zaire. Right? Ali and Joe Fraser have the thriller in Manila. Right? I get that some of these fights happen where you don't think they would. Right? Lennox Lewis beats Vitaly Klitschko in Los Angeles, California. Right? But wow. When fighters have the power and when there is the culture and the money. I'm surprised the fighter just can't say, hey, promoter, I want to fight in the UK. You know, I'm surprised, you know, whatever the trash talk, it seems to me the fighters should be able to privately get together, shake hands, and AJ should be able to say to Tyson Fury, hey, look, player, I'm game to fight in the UK. Let's get this done. And then the fight happens there. Right? The clock might have already run out. People here know I privately think, well, publicly think, Usyk's going to beat AJ. Right? But I'm still astonished. I'm astonished that the assumption has been that Fury would fight AJ and it would be outside of the UK. That boggles my mind. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your thoughts in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.